Apex Trader Funding updated their rules to stop the gamblers. What does this mean for you as a new trader or somebody who's using them for a while? Well, in this video, we're going to review those rules. Of course, if you're looking for a prop firm and the best discount on those firms, check the links below. You can use code FORCE TRADING to get 90% off with Apex Trader Funding right now. Or you can check out my funding futures with the link below. Or if you're looking for a new trading home, uh, there is a link with wap.com slash trade edge. We trade live every single day in our discord. I've been day trading for a number of years now. I've had multiple six figure trades. I've gotten payouts from just about every single prop firm, but yeah, mostly focus on trading my own account as well. But again, we're going to review these rules in this video and I'll give you my take, my feedback on whether or not I think this is really important and whether or not you should stay clear of apex because of this rule change. Uh, let's get into it. One of the most important things to look for in a prop firm is longevity, right? Payouts, will they pay you? How do they pay you? And then longevity, right? Does it feel fair? Does it feel like the microphone is just wiggling all over the freaking place, staying in the same spot? But in addition to your microphone not moving, there's nothing worse. There's no worse feeling than putting in a lot of work in the markets. You feel like you're doing the right thing, and then the firm just doesn't you know, acknowledge your work. They refuse to pay you because of some arbitrary rule. And we want to make sure that is not the case here with Apex. Now, I've been using Apex for a long time. And I've seen a big frenzy online about this rule change and people saying like, oh, are they a scam or not? I'm going to give you guys the TLDR. You should watch the rest of the video. I'm going to break down why. But no, I don't think they're, you know, fraudulent or scamming people or anything like that. But I do have not really a hot take, but a pretty reasoned take on the reality of the situation. Uh, so let's go ahead, take a look at the rules, and I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Okay, so we're now taking a look at the rules with Apex Trader Funding. We're not going to watch the video. This is 11 minutes. You can come here, watch the video for yourself. Really, what I want to do is just look at the actual text. What are they actually saying? And relate that to what they actually do. Okay, again, I've been trading Apex for a long time, and I know a lot of people Specifically, this is even more important that I've been trading them getting payouts as well. So there's there's what they say and then there's what they do, which is pretty important. OK, in all of this, as well as like the whole YouTube, you know, prop trader influencer ecosystem, which is also a play here. OK, first, evaluation counts do not have a consistency rule. So all these rule changes, again, guys, really only apply to PAs. Apex has always been super flexible with evals, just like every other firm. You can pass the account however you want. Now, my recommendation, despite the fact that you can pass an account however you want, is to trade the eval accounts just like how you would really trade especially if you're new if you're new and you don't have a profit factor over one right you have no data there's no point in gambling accounts to pass okay the, the only caveat to that i could see is that you get the accounts on sale and you just sit them there and then you take a really long time to learn how to trade but even then honestly apex always has sales and once you're a profitable trader none of the fees or any of that really even matters and this is going to bring me to my first point of i think why they made this change is that there are a lot of youtubers who are in the game of blowing up 20 pas at a time right so they come on here they get a bunch of accounts they'll even break down the math of like well if i pass this many accounts so then this many accounts blow up in a pa and i get paid from this and they don't even approach the market as a trader it's not really their intention. Their intention is entirely to look at the metrics and the pass through rate for funded accounts and then to extract value from these firms, which is a way to make money. That's a way to make money like they're making money. But the problem with that is that one, none of these people will ever actually have large trades just in the market as traders. Right. They'll never actually be able to, to sit through and risk their own capital, reasonable amounts of their own capital right? I've done trades with like 30K down, 100K down, right? I've been in huge trades. And you can even look back on my channel. These videos, the production is not good, but you can, the videos are there of me making multiple six figures multiple times on this channel, okay? Just as a trader. None of these guys will ever do that, right? Because they're playing, they're only playing the prop game, okay? Now, again, making money is making money, not hating, but this is where Apex comes into play. Apex is a business and a business needs to make money. And so if their mission is to actually find traders. Obviously, they're making money off of fees. That's not it'll be real about it. OK, they're making money off of these fees. That's fine. But if suddenly it becomes popular for people to just come in and find some edge and way to like gamble accounts, that's not good for their business. And it's not good for the people who actually want to use them as real traders and as a means to build capital. I think that prop firms are one of the best ways for new traders to actually build capital. Right. If you don't have twenty five thousand dollars 
to meet the minimum equity requirements for day trading, it's really, really hard to get started. It is because I had to get, I didn't start with prop firms. I had to like invest a couple hundred dollars every week. And it took a long time. And then as I gained and lost money, it, it took a really long time for me to like get those breakthrough trades. It, it, it did guys. Like I, I've only been using prop firms for like a little over a year. Okay. I've only traded my own capital for years before that. So I've only gained and lost real money. And so this proliferation of YouTubers and all these prop firms, and I talk about prop firms a lot on my account, obviously, because it's a hot thing and it's a great tool, honestly, which is why I've been using them to scale, you know, equity across accounts. We have to realize that there's two sides to this coin and Apex is on the other side of that coin in some regards. Okay. So evaluation and accounts don't have a consistency rule. We can see here, Apex doesn't want gamblers, lucky traders, windfall traders, scammers, erratic traders. Just right off the bat, I'm going to keep it. I'll keep it a stack with you guys. I'll keep it 100%. And I've always said this, even back to like my first videos. They can literally disqualify you for just about any reason. These prop firms, like I know the entry is low now because of they're online. But if you were to walk into like an SMB Capital, like one of these like brick and mortar prop firms and be a prop trader and actually sit at a trading desk, you think you're going to get to do whatever you want? <laughs> Like you think you could just come in and be like, hey, guys, I'm just going to risk it all today. And, you know, you got to let me and then you got to pay me like, no, because they we know for a fact that your profit factor over time, like in that time, doesn't have to be a big window, it could be like a week is going to be less than one. It's literally you're going to lose money. And so all of all of that just falls into here. So if you're doing any of that, if you're like, well, they're rules like guys, they're, they're not going to pay you. They're just not going to pay you. So you may have some intuition about where I'm going with this video as far as the rules go. Okay. So it, I understand their perspective entirely, and I don't think it's wrong from their perspective. Now, as somebody who's looking for prop firms, we always have to look for what's in our own best interest. So it doesn't mean that we just got to like, you know, you can be mad about it, but you just, you have to accept the environment that you're in and understand that they need to run a sustainable business and you want to get paid as a trader. Okay. So Apex wants traders with a trading system, it's disciplined, consistent, compromises and an exact set of rules, blah, 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 blah. So let's actually scroll down to none of this is, is you know, really too important. We can see here that they don't want to defraud the company, have a, a lack of good risk management, jump from strategy to strategy. Okay. So let's look at where they actually talk about stop losses, which is down here. Okay. So risk to reward ratios between three to four times the amount of potential target profits are acceptable to Apex without a red flag. And there was some confusion in, in the way that they wrote this is a little weird, but you can actually see that this is exceptionally lenient in a weird way. It says if you're targeting to make $100 in profit, do not risk more than three to 400. So they're talking about RR almost backwards in this case, which is confusing to me. It should be risking 100 to make three or four. You shouldn't be risking 300 or $400 to make 100. That's insane. That's like, they're basically saying, hey guys, this is as bad as we're going to let you be. So that means if you're putting an ATM strategy on, right, you hit buy the ask on Ninja, okay, and your stop is four points down and your TP is one point up, that's a terrible trade. That's just a flat out terrible trade. And so they're basically saying like, hey, if you're going to do these consistently just terrible trades, like this is the max that they're looking for on average in the aggregate. Okay, it says on your stops, do not move them backwards to potentially lose more than your strategy accounts for. It can always move stops forward to trail and protect profits. So stops that take profits can be placed upon trade entry with ATM strategies and adjust it. So you can move your trades, when, uh, you can move your stops and TP after. They could be manually placed, right? It also says here they could be mentally placed. So they're basically saying we don't even have to see it. The reason that they don't have to see it is because they can just look at your trade performance over time. It doesn't really matter here. They can see based off of your average profit and your average stop or when you exit a trade they can just calculate it so even if you're not putting it on there it's a really easy metric to figure out just based off of trade performance you can look at profit factor things like that on average okay trader would know where where the entry would be where to get out i mean this just fits with all the stuff that i talk about on my channel you should not get into a trade but that uh, doesn't have a thesis okay your stop should be where the trade fails okay and your tp should be at wherever your expected value is so I specifically don't even think in RR. I mention that all the time. Risk reward is completely made up. It's it's an observation after the fact. But most trades, right? If you're trading at the edge, if you're looking to long off a previous day POC in a higher high, a higher low situation, your EV is going to be the entire range, right? So the RR on that is like one to fifty, and we do trades like this. Okay, if you're trading scalping on smaller time frames, your RR is going to get compressed or whatever. 
but you should easily be hitting like one to fives and things like that if you're truly you're trading within my system looking at you know the volume profile things like that but you'll never actually hear me mention rr getting into a trade because it's completely irrelevant your stop should be where the trade fails your take profit should be where you predict the market's going to move to okay so rr is simply a metric now looking backwards we can always take that into account for our profit expectancy and things like that okay but we can see here that they're talking about you know having a strategy and a real system okay so prohibitive no existence of risk management rules they do talk about scaling and adding into trades okay dollar cost averaging this is the one where everybody i think got mad it says is defined as the practice of entering a trade with a directional bias or no bias just entering the gamble and the market goes against you in the other direction but continuing to enter more and more orders multiple times in the direction of the original order even while market continues and continues to go the, the, the opposing way so this is the opposite of averaging into a winner the only way that i could see that i would have some contention with this and and i i know that they wouldn't even get mad at this because again this there's what they say then what they do if i go long one in queue and then i re-long maybe five points lower because it goes it, it just retests my level okay and then i stop there then i take one off and i let the other one run okay and i do that one out of ten trades they're not I mean, they would be completely in their right to take that off. I, I would say that. And I wouldn't even be mad. They would be completely in their right to disqualify that trade. But this rule exists, and I'm telling you guys, this rule exists for people who like to martingale, right? People who like to double down on losing bets, which is different from, okay, you will see sometimes in overnight setups, people will ladder into trades. And so there could be a key level at 5,300 and another key level at 5,395. And I'm not going to be up, so I'll have a long entry at 5300 and a long level at 5305. Well, really, it'd be 5305 then 300 if we're coming down into it. Whatever the prices may be, okay, that's a reasonable setup. But I would have, I should have, right, two stops that would get entered when I create those orders at the same price. So my stops should be with that setup at the same price, right? My stop shouldn't really move. There should be a an ultimate level where the trade fails if it doesn't bounce off those two key levels, right? And this rule exists to stop people who are just like, hey, the trade's moving against me. I'm just going to keep adding contracts to make up for my loss. They're essentially trading their PL and to come out big. And ultimately, what that always looks like is a huge amount of leverage, right? The people who are doing this, that uh, this rule is really created for, are people who are like, hey, they go from one contract, the losing trade, and by 20 points down, and now they're up to 10 contracts, and then the trade randomly works out, right? Because it catches a little pivot, but they're only up like a little bit because they were losing most of the way. The reason that they don't want people doing that is that when these trades swing, say you do get a bounce and it swings heavily in your favor, now you've made a crap ton of money, right? If you do this on PAs, it's unsustainable. And we know that the profit factor, let's say you're on a hot run, which is entirely possible, right? Let's say you just keep you keep doing this and you know you flip heads 10 times in a row, which is totally possible, right? Statistically, flip a quarter, okay? You 100% could get the same outcome 10 times in a row. It's possible, okay? Unlikely, but possible. Somebody does that. They don't want people who get lucky. They want people who over months, you know, have a, a positive profit factor, especially if you're doing it with large leverage and just with the goal of taking, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars out of their coffers. I don't think there's anything wrong with them having that as a rule. And again, if you're trading large size consistently, which isn't isn't what they're talking about here, right? If your average trade size is, is 10 in Q and you're just doing 10 in Q with a one to three, that's well within the rules. It doesn't matter, right? The 30% rule isn't going to get you. None of the rules are going to get you because your every trade is the same size. If you can actually trade that big without blowing up, that's your normal size, you're good to go. So none of these rules have to do with size, right? It all has to do with the setups that they know that gamblers take. And the only people that I've seen upset about this are people who are just trying to get a quick buck. None of this would work, by the way. If you were trading your own account, and if you look at the drawdown that's in some of these accounts, you would never have access to that leverage anyway, guys. And that's the real thing that is lost on people here, okay? If you have an account with, you know, say you, you, you could do something like NinjaTrader, right? You put 10K in, that would, give you, that would give you access to 10 contracts, right? Every $1,000 gives you access to one in queue. But you would never actually be able to go into a 10 in queue trade, right? If it moved against you even one tick, they would auto-liquidate you. So in order to do these like strategies in your own account, you need a ton of money, especially if they go to full margin requirements, right? Full margin requirements for one in queue is like $18,000. If you were actually going to try to trade these data events, like all the gamblers do with your, with your own account, you need like $200,000 in your account and you would never average down crazily like that. 
in your own account. You wouldn't. The reason you're doing it is because you're trying to game the system, which is what they're trying to beat here. So long story short in this video, guys, I don't think the rules matter at all. And as stated, they even stated that these rules have existed, right? These have always been in the agreements. They've just brought them up more to the forefront to say, hey, guys, we're going to start enforcing these. And, and the reason that this is so important is because Apex, in my opinion, has, has always been super lenient. Um, they do a lot of sales. They give access to leverage at amazing prices. They're pretty reasonable with their customer support, right? They're, no, they're not perfect. No firm is perfect. Okay, they're not paying me to say this, okay? I have an affiliate. I'm an affiliate like everybody else, so I do get money from them. But Daryl didn't email me and said, hey, dude, can you put out this PR piece? That's not what's happening here. What's happening here is I'm just having a reasonable take and basically looking at like, hey, in a world where there's people day trading 20 PAs and blowing them up like it's a freaking casino and trying to get other people to do the same and showing the math of like, well, you know, you get 20 PAs and if you keep five within a week and then you get a payout from three, it's like, that's not why they're in business. And if they see people doing that, then they're going to stop it. And that's within their right to do that, right? There, there's no reason for them to let adversarial people, you know, be partners with them. It, it makes no sense. It's, it's crazy to complain about that. We know for a fact, I know for a fact that they will let you get away with trading news is so long as your P&L is not crazy. So like, you're not supposed to trade news, right? But if you trade news and your average P&L is 2,000 bucks a day, and then on a news day, it's 3,500 or 2,000, they literally don't care, right? All of the rules in the system that they've designed is so that people who have an average payout of $5,000 don't suddenly have an average payout of 65,000, okay? Like a lump sum, but then they quit. They never show up again, which is possible, right? If they didn't have these rules, it would be super easy to just gamble, especially with the amount of money I have, get 20 accounts, trade some news event, make 100K on a news day, right? Even if I failed 50 times, I could do that one time with 20 accounts and make a couple million bucks, right? It makes no sense. That's not real trading. That's, not, that's just literally flipping a coin, right? The market's only going to go up or down. Anybody could flip a coin and make 50K any given day, honestly. But if you keep flipping it, again, we know your profit factor is going to go to zero unless you have edge and can prove that consistency, which is what they want. So long story short, Apex, still really great firm, in my opinion. You know, the only thing that I don't like about them, which is the same, is that the fact that you're capped on payouts for three months, which is annoying. I do think that that is a, a bit of a handicap. There are firms like My Fund of Futures, I think, and even though I'm their official YouTuber, I think is the best firm overall for just getting paid off of what your actual trade performance. So if you actually are a trader that can consistently trade a little bit higher leverage and you want to get paid on that out the gate, they're the best firm for that. Hands down, bar none. Apex caps you. Say you consistently do five grand a day with Apex. Doesn't matter. Even if you do that for three months, you're only going to get the maximum payout for the first three months of, you know, two to three thousand dollars, whatever it is based off the account size. Right. So they're going to kneecap you in that regard. And you have to be consistent for a really long amount of time. So if you just want a firm that's just straightforward, get your money, my fun and futures. Apex, though, gives you 20 accounts. So even though you're capped, three, say you get a 250K account for 16 bucks right now, max payout is three grand. Well, three times 20 is 60 so you're making 60 grand a month still so there's pros and cons to every single one apex gives you a lot of leverage for super cheap always gonna have like intrinsic value for that reason they're always a great choice for that reason and i, I really think everybody complaining right now is just either they're brand new and you don't know and that's reasonable but i think a lot of the people are people who are intending to gamble and it was never for you in any case that's it for this video thanks for watching pc in the next one bye